Fusion 360 combines CAD and CAM applications into a single, well-integrated software. It includes all the tools you need to go from design to fabrication without having to leave the platform. The software is very powerful, but if you want to keep things simple, you can. As an example, it only takes a few minutes to open a solid model, in this case a step file. Go to the Manufacturer Workspace, create a few toolpaths, then simulate the toolpaths, and finally post-process CNC code. This is a basic example. For many CNC programmers, this level of functionality is all they need. Beyond the basics, Fusion 360 has features that allow you to represent in-process stock, create multiple machining setups, and cascade the cut stock from one setup to the next. There are two ways to use this feature. One, you can move the setups around the part. Or two, you can move the parts around the setup. In this video, I'm going to provide an overview of the first method, as I believe this will be most used. If we look at the design workspace, we'll see there are three bodies that represent the part I'm going to machine. The part itself, the raw stock, and a version of the part with some holes removed to help make the surfacing toolpaths easier to create. There are also four different vices oriented around the bodies, representing the work holding for each of the four machining setups. Op 1, Op 2, Op 3, and Op 4. The key point here is that the bodies, which represent the part I want to machine, are fixed in space, while the four different vices, each one corresponding with one of my machining setups, move around the bodies. If we go to the manufacturing workspace, the first thing I'm going to do is sync view visibility, and view cube with active setup. As I activate the different machining setups, the view, visibility of model and fixture bodies, as well as the view cube will synchronize with the active setup. Next, I'm going to display in-process stock and make it transparent. If I turn off the vices and only show the part, you'll see there are four user-created views that are oriented in a way to visualize the part as it moves through each of the four machining operations. Next, you'll see there are four different setups. Op 1, Op 2, Op 3, Dop 4. As I activate each setup and step through the operations, notice the following. The view synchronizes with the setup. If I right click on each of the setups, you can see I've associated a name view with each of the setups. These are the views I've created to make it easier to see the machining in each setup.
The visibility of the fixtures dates to match what is defined in each setup. If I make all the vices visible and then edit each of the four setups, you can see the vice that is selected for each one. Synchronizing the visibility means we'll only see the vice used for the active setup. The view cube updates in a way so that the side of the cube labeled top corresponds with the z-axis orientation of each setup. Notice how the green in-process stock updates as I activate the setups and step through each operation. next point is very important. Each setup uses the exact same body for the model. If I try to change that, I'll receive a warning. The in-process stock will not calculate correctly unless each setup uses the exact same body as the model. Some toolpath types are model aware, and you can override the setup model within those operations when necessary. That is the case with the blend tool path in the OP4 setup. Rather than using the setup model, this operation is using a different solid body that does not have the four holes. The very first setup uses the from solid mode and the raw stock body to define the stock. I could have used any of the stock modes to define the raw material for this first operation, but I decided to actually model the raw stock because that made it easier for me to use joints to position the OP1 vise. The remaining setups use a stock mode called From Preceding Setup. This causes the active setup to begin with stock in the size and shape based on the toolpaths used in the preceding setup. Also notice, the Continue Rest Machining checkbox is checked. This will allow intelligent roughing toolpaths to only cut material that wasn't removed during previous setups, saving time. Each setup has an appropriate work coordinate system defined that corresponds to the WCS I'll set up on the physical CNC machine. What I like about this method and this functionality. First, rather than having to make individual CAM files for each setup, you can complete all of your CNC programming in a single file. Additionally, any changes you make to your toolpaths that affect the condition of the stock are automatically updated in subsequent setups and operations. Furthermore, if you have all four vices set up on your machine in the same time, you can use the NC program to reorder the operations to minimize tool changes. In this example, 
we can eliminate one tool change. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time.